Hello, welcome back to the FPD Theater lighting tutorials. This is going to be lighting tutorial number five, the moving lights. Yes, the movers. Why the movers? Because they're fun, that's why. I will say that I was kind of slow to come to these. When, when we first heard that we were getting them, they were largely being brought in, I think, for special effects for the a church that was going to be using our auditorium. And I had a mental image of, you know, rock concerts and the moving lights doing, you know, the cool stuff like that. And I thought that that might fit into some shows somewhere, you know, needed some sort of cool lighting effect. What I didn't realize then and what I've come to know is that these are useful in any type of theater lighting. Realistic, fanciful, all of that can work um, because it's basically just a powerful lighting instrument that can be moved and focused while sitting at the light board instead of being up on a ladder or a lift or dangling on the catwalk. And that's an incredibly powerful thing. So we're gonna start by choosing it. We're here in the tombstone view, all right? And the tombstone view, by the way, I haven't told you the exact name, but it's called the live table. Um, those of us in the business just tend to call it a tombstone view because those little tabs look like tombstones. Um, but we're, gonna, we're in the tombstone view here. And we're going to look for the Rogue R2 Spot 18 channel. Okay. The uh, 18 channel, these are the moving lights. They're, they're, they're called the Rogue R3, R3, R2s, I'm sorry. Um, and you'll see it says 18 channels. What that means is each one of these lighting instruments needs 18 full channels of data to give it the information it needs to operate. That's a bunch of channels. And that shows you why, even though our light board has two full universes of, of lights, on, of channels on it, you know, 1,024 lights, uh, you know, channels on it, that doesn't mean that we can run that many lighting instruments, because some of them need a bunch. So each of these need 18. We have eight of them. That's what, 144 channels being used just for these eight lights. So those channels are carrying different information. They'll carry, one channel will carry intensity. How bright is it? One channel will cover pan and tilt. That's its horizontal and vertical position. They'll control the speed that it moves. They'll control, remember we, how we, when we changed lights in the last one? It had those gels that kind of just scroll around the color. So it'll have to set what position those gels are in. Um, these have other powers that you, can, that you can use, like a focus on them. That's carried by a channel. Um, they carry a gobos, basically cut out pieces of metal that can go in front of the light and change how it looks. Those are controlled by another channel. So you can see a bunch of channels needed to run these instruments. So we're gonna right now, we're gonna, we're gonna choose, oh, let's not be shy, let's choose all of them. So I'm gonna grab the mouse, and I'm just gonna click my way down, get all of these chosen. And I'm going to use the, the silver uh, wheel on the board, and I'm just going to flip those up. Now, I flipped them up, and a bunch of stuff has come on. The reason you see all sorts of cool patterns and other stuff is the lighting instruments remember what was left on them. So whatever information was left in, on them is what's going to be there unless you clear it out. So you see this whole list. These are all the 18 channels and what each variable is. So you'll see right now, let me get this, let me get a focus on this thing. All right, a little at a time, all right. So you see pan and tilt, that's their positions. You see the color select, that shows you what gel is currently on, okay. You see iris, that's how wide it's open to let light in. The edge is how close the lens is to or from the light that makes the light either soft or have a hard edge on stage. Strobe light, whether it's being used as a strobe, both is it being used as a strobe and how fast is it going. Diffusion, uh, the diffusion basically lets the light kind of spread out over a wide area and not be quite as harsh and so forth. I mean, gobos, now we're getting into the, uh, the, the metal pieces that can go in front of the lights and shape it. All of those variables. And right now you see there's some green gels that have been left on. There's some gobos that are making kind of a woods pattern up there, all sorts of crazy stuff. So let's go into the moving light panel. You know where that is, the ML controls, and see if we can't bring some order to chaos here. 
All right, now, the first part of this looks the same. We have intensity, we have them all on full right now at 100%. All right, now we get to the fun stuff. We have this section called pan and tilt. You'll notice all these little yellow dots hiding in there. That is showing their relative position on their vertical and horizontal axis. Um, so with each of them, you can control their pan, that's their left to right movement, and their tilt, that's their up and down movement. Um, they, will, they will pan almost all the way around, and they will tilt almost all the way from forward to back. So with those, you can really put the lights in a lot of different locations. Before we do anything though, let's clear out all of that stuff. So over the side, there is this thing that says all. All right, we're going to, and there's a little picture of a house under it. We're going to press that house button. That's going to home the lighting instruments. That basically will take them back to their neutral setting. So when I hit home, they're all going to move. They're gonna go back to white. And now they're moving slowly because for some reason with this lighting instrument, they default to the slowest position speed. So I'm gonna to go to their position speed and I'm gonna change that to the fastest so we can get it where we want it, all right? Now, they've disappeared from the view, but they're on. I'm a, they are on, they're just facing straight down. If anyone was sitting at about the, what was it, down there, about the second row, they would be blinded right now. All right, you see those beams now that are starting to focus on them? Yeah, I should have gotten some smoke in the air, then we could have really seen them well. All right, so I can use this pan tilt. Now, I can adjust pan and tilt separately, using those controls just like we, right here, just like we adjusted um, other stuff uh, like the red and blue and green before. So watch this, let's just do this. So I'm gonna pan. All right, and right now they're turning. You can't see it happening much. Let me do the tilt. The tilt might be more obvious right now. So I'm gonna affect the tilt. And they all came up and they shone on the wall. Okay, now I can, now I can move the pan. Oh, there they go. Now they're moving, all right? So I can adjust it that way. Um, there's also some, some knobs on the top of the lighting board that I can assign and do this as well. Uh, in fact, let me go ahead and point these out and I'll uh, turn my uh, little clip light on here so you can kind of see them. All right, see up here? All right. These are sometimes called soft keys because they can be assigned to different things. And when you choose the moving lights, these two are automatically assigned pan and tilt. So I, and these are just kind of little rollers. I can just kind of roll these around and you can't see it right now, but the lights are going crazy. So using those rollers, those little soft, roll, those little soft rollers, I can really move it around that way. I can really move it around this way. Now generally, if you were working with the moving lights, you'd be focusing one at a time. But I'm doing it this way just so you can really, really, really see it. All right? So, but we can also do that, looking down at the panel, look at this. All right, that little grid that's down there, we can choose any spot in that grid and it will automatically go there. Now, getting used to the grid takes a little bit of practice. Essentially, the positions in the top right are largely gonna be the ones that are facing the stage. So I'm gonna go here, I'm just gonna grab this and I'm gonna drag it. All right, so here we go. This is in the first, the top quadrant. All right, there, those are largely in the stage area or just above it or just below, okay? If I move over here to the side area, it's actually shining on the left wall of the auditorium. If I go down here, it's flipping it all the way backwards and shining it, it kind of tilts all the way back around again. All right? So if you're using this on stage, you're basically gonna be focusing kind of one at a time where you need them. All right, so that's how we move them. Let's actually take them all out at the moment. All right, I did that just using the silver knob on the, uh, there, let's just choose one of them. Choose 120, I'm gonna bring it up. All right, let's see, I'm gonna turn this light off because we don't need it so much now. All right, let's look at this. I'm not gonna get too 
I'm not going to get you too drowned in this because I really want you just kind of with basic functionality on this. Um, plus, it's just super hard just to talk about it uh, without you actually playing with it. But just to show you, um, I can scroll through these these things on the top over here. I'm just, can I get both ends screen? Kind of. Might have to strain a little bit. Let me see if I can go here and I'll try to scroll them over where we can see them better. And I can move it over a little closer to us as well. Come here. Come over here. All right, now we can see it. There we go. So, as we discussed before, there's our color selector. We can choose some gels for it. All right. And we can mix them. So I'm going to choose yellow in the first set. And then we'll go to the second set. I'm going to choose light blue. And it gives us kind of a, you know, to my eyes, it looks almost sea foamy, but it looks almost olive on the, on the camera. Um, open those back up. We have a nice warm light on it. We have a gel that's called CTC, what is that, 560i? Yeah. I like it because it makes these LED lights look like the old-fashioned lights. And so it makes it easier to use them together. So I use that a lot. All right. Other options we have here. We have an iris where we can change the width of the light. Oops. All right. If you've ever worked a spotlight before, you've kind of used an iris lever before. That's what that does. Again, these are all just controls you can choose on the, on, on the, uh, right in the ML controls. The next one is edge. Edge simply fuzzes out the side, or going the other direction, really focuses it. You can tell when something is really focused because it gets a little blue, almost halo around the edge of it. I think you can see that a little bit in here. Let me see if I can pick it up in the camera. See that little bit of blue halo on the edge? You can barely see it when the camera. All right, so that's pretty much focused. All right, um, what else can it do? And we can also make it into a strobe light, which we've talked about. Um, I'm not going to do that simply because we know what strobe lights look like. I don't want to knock anyone out by seeing it. And we have the various pictures that we can put in front of it, the metal cutouts, what are called gobos, G-O-B-O. -O. Um, gobo is actually an abbreviation. It stands for goes before optics. And it means that the piece of metal is inserted in the light in front of the lens. The lens is the optic. All right? Looks a little fuzzy there. We can go back to our edge and we can use the edge to get it nice and focused for us. Or if we want it fuzzy for an effect, I sometimes use misfocused um, gobos to get like the effect of maybe like light coming through trees or something like that on stage. So all of those very easily assignable. Um, right from using the controls right along here. So if you were using this in a show, you would go through and set each one of these right where you want them, set you know how hard an edge it has, put out put whatever um, a color choice on it, whether you want this turning, all of that you would set ahead of time. You could see why you would have to have some way to be able to program and record these. Because if you had to set 18 different data points for every one of these lights, every time you wanted to do a different scene on stage, it would be insane. So in the next part of our video series, we're gonna talk about writing a cue, which is basically how do we take all these cool looks that we're making and save them so that, so that the computer can automatically pull them up and display them when we need them. All right? All right.